more general. Right. Okay. Uh, and now it takes a bit more thought. Uh, and you'll see in the, let's see, uh, one and a half squares more on, on this example. Uh, there's quite a bit of math, uh, in a sense, uh, numerical numerical analysis almost. Uh, basic basic number theory. You'll, you'll see uh, that we'll use to prove that uh, this pumped string cannot. You know, it's impossible that this pump string belongs to D. Okay, so you know, have a look at these perfect squares. So uh, if uh, if P is P is naught. Uh, how, do you, how do you get zero? <laughs> yeah, I get puzzled sometimes by by SIPSA. Now one, yeah, one, two squared, three squared, fair enough. Zero, uh, zero squared. Can, can, can that be? Oh, the empty string. S be the empty string. I guess. All right. Uh, that, well, here, you know, here, here, perfect. The list, you know, the sequence of perfect squares. Now, can you? It's sort of common sense. You can just see the the size of the gap, you know, the the uh, is increasing. Um, so for for a large, you know, way out into the sequence, uh, the perfect square is uh, nowhere near. It's not close to the next perfect square. Right? The gap, the difference uh, between these numbers, uh, the difference between perfect squares grows larger and larger as you, as you go further and further to the right, okay? Uh, you know, that's what it's what I'm saying here. Right, well now, have a look, um, have a look now at uh, two strings. So the original S, and we're assuming, uh, you know, for that S uh, it's a member of language D, and we're assuming that D is uh, regular, and therefore this uh, String S uh, is um, guaranteed by the pumping lemma to be that you can split it into you know, X Y Z. Right? Well, so let's pump it uh, just once. So we'll add an extra copy of Y and insert it here. So now you've got X Y Y Z. So let's analyze the properties of this and this, and we will show that this, this uh, mildly pumped string, uh, there's only one extra copy of y there, so it's, it's like x, y to the 2, z. So we will show uh, with the um, numerical type analysis that this string here is not, of the, is not a perfect square. Okay? We'll, we'll, sh we'll show that that's the case. And uh, therefore, this pump string does not belong to D. Right? Language D, all its members are perfect squares. You know, their, their lengths are per uh, perfect square. So the length, the length of this thing, uh, is not the square. It's not a square number. It's not a perfect square. Right? So we'll show, we'll show that the length of this thing is not a perfect square. Now the length of this one, um, that's just S, right? And S belongs to D, and uh, therefore uh, is a perfect square. So this is a perfect. This, you know, the length of this thing is a perfect square, and we will prove that the length of this one is not not a perfect square. Okay. So uh, so how to do that? Okay. So here here comes so uh, quite a bit of uh, math analysis, and except for the, now the same. The same query arises here again uh, as earlier. Uh, I maybe I, I get lazy sometimes. I suppose I, I should just sit down and uh, think it through and um, you know, convince myself that what Sipsa is saying is true. Now maybe I'm just being dense, you know, thick, stupid, idiot, uh, or maybe. Sipsa himself is assuming, uh, rather unjustifiably, something that he may consider perfectly obvious, which to most other people is not. Uh, I, I just don't know. Uh, the jury is out, well, for me anyway. Uh, you, you'll see what I mean when we get to it, because we've been here before. And, uh, um,
previous day's film, well, actually night, but no, daytime now. Uh, okay, so now, um, can you see uh, the difference between this? Now, we're, we're trying to show that the, dis the, the length of this is not a perfect square. Okay. Uh, now it's uh, it's it's a unary language. Remember, there's only one symbol. So the x, the y, and the z they all contain the same symbol. Right? They're just ones. So maybe we just with different uh, number of ones in in the substring. Okay. Now, give, given the, given it's unary, a unary language, it's only one symbol. Uh, is it obvious to you that uh, the difference, the difference in length of this one minus the uh, the length in this one, will will be just the length of y? Is that is that sort of obvious to you? Right. So the difference in length between that and that is just the difference is uh, is the length of y. Okay. I, I, I assume that's fairly obvious to you, right? Okay, now uh, again we use our famous uh, condition three uh, of, the, of the pumping manner, which, which just says this that the size of xy is going to be less or equal to p. p is your pumping length. Okay, we've used this quite a few times now. Now, from this, uh, given that uh, we're, we have a unary language, uh, if this is true, then this is true. That just the size of y must be less or equal to p. Now, uh, uh, Sipsa just uh, throws this at you. Now, it's fairly obvious that I've, I've put, you know, this is me, you know, in, in uh, parentheses here, this, this is me. I've just added it. Um, so. Right, uh, now that's the therefore sign, this is the because sign. Now, why, why is that true? Well, because, and then, then I explain. Um, now, you're talking unary language. So, uh, the size of xy will be greater or equal to just y, okay? Because x, x may have, have uh, x may, it's possible, or most probable, that x is not the empty string. Yeah, probably has something in it, in which case the length of this one will be greater than that one. But it could, it could be empty strings. So, so, the size of xy will be greater or equal to the size of y, right? Uh, so that means the size of y is less or equal to that, okay? But from the third lemma, uh, the size of xy is less or equal to p. Therefore, the size of y is less or equal to p, right? which is here. So, so this, that's me, I've added, uh, is to, you know, showing this. All right. Okay. Uh, now, all right, so you've got that. Uh, just shelve that for a while, and we'll come back to it. So we know that um, uh, the size of y is less or equal to p. Now we, now we know that the size of the string, now uh, x, y, z, that's s, that's our string, it belongs to d, right? Therefore it's a perfect square. Now, uh, so the size of this is just the number of ones you have. Well, you have p squared of them, okay? So the, si the size of s, that's the, that's the size of X, Y, Z, because that's what S is, right? Is P squared. You, you just get that from here. The size of S is just P squared. Therefore, uh, the size of X, Y, Z, which is S, is P squared. So, so you've got that, right? <coughs> now, uh, what is the size of, of uh, X, Y squared Z? Well, given you know, the language is unary, well, you can you see that that's just going to be the size of X, Y, Z plus the size of Y? Yeah, because because here you got an extra an extra y there, so so this effectively is just x y y z, right? And uh, that will be the size of y larger than than this. So uh, I think that's pretty pretty trivial. Okay. Uh, now this the size of that's just p squared. Okay. So for this substitute p squared. So yeah, they're the same. But from here, uh, the size of y is less or equal to p. Okay? So this, this here, this sum, will be less or equal to this sum. Follow that? That's equal to that. 
but this is uh, less or equal to p. So this whole thing is less or equal to that whole thing. Okay. Um, well, you know, just go straight on. <laughs> uh, I think you can probably see the first. You know, usually I, I set up the cameras <laughs> so you can see the first line of the next session. All right. Uh, so, so uh, let's see. So we've got the size of x y squared z is less or equal to p squared plus p. Now, p squared plus p is less than p p squared plus two p plus one. Right? That, that's pretty obvious. But p squared plus two p plus one is just the square of p plus one. Okay, now we'll use that, uh, but I'll just go straight on the next session. Uh, yeah.